It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Every adult who was in any way abused in childhood continues to carry the trauma inside. According to today's guest, Dr. Arlene Drake, experiences like these leave a lifelong imprint on the body and mind throughout adulthood unless we can learn to repair and reparent. She offers a powerful roadmap designed to help survivors break free of the lies, secrets, and shame of the past in order to reclaim their genuine self. Dr. Drake is a pioneer in the field of childhood abuse and trauma recovery. She's a crusader for victims' rights. Her new book is Carefrontation, Breaking Free from Childhood Trauma. Welcome, Dr. Drake. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Drake, when we talk about childhood traumas, what are the types of things that we usually carry into adulthood? Well, we can carry numerous things. We could, ha- we could uh, become addicts. We can um, have a countless trouble with relationships. We can do a lot of self-sabotage. Just when we think we are or just when we're getting where we want to be, we do something to knock everything over so we have to start over again. It could be depression. It could be anxiety. It even affects our immune system, they're finding out. Childhood trauma affects our immune system. It can cause uh, stomach problems, gastrointestinal uh, gynecological problems, and, and lower our immune system. So it's many, many things can happen from that. Doctor, what types of traumas are we talking about? Well, we're talking about physical, sexual, and emotional abuse, and even neglect. Neglect is a very, very hard abuse to get over because people don't even recognize it as abuse, yet they often have the same symptoms as everyone else. Are adults always aware why they behave in the way they do, or do we bury the pain so deeply that they're unable to even make the connection? I think that we do bury the pain so deeply we can't make the connection, and I think it's also we want to minimize as much as possible. We don't want to really look at this. So we're having trouble in relationships. We're having trouble at work, but we don't connect the two. We just don't know why we can't do better. Our unconscious is tripping us up, you know, uh, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will r- rule our life and we'll call it fate. So we have to get to that. Doctor, is it possible to suffer abuse in childhood and not carry any of those scars into adulthood? No, I don't think so. And I don't think what the research has shown it can either because you may not remember, you may have a completely blank memory, but everything is carried in the body. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the body remembers what the mind forgets. And also your unconscious, the very, very, that that part of your brain that's almost reptilian keeps all of that trauma. So we may have no actual knowledge, but that will do something to us and we will not know what it is. So what is pioneering about your work? How does your approach differ? Well, my approach is, you know, I have a motto and the motto is the end of endless therapy. My approach, well, as you said, it has a clear roadmap to get people beyond the abuse victim stage. And, and get people to take the power back in their life. And I stay on track. I give people homework every week, which is important because a lot of times, I just had a young man in therapy um, last Thursday, and many times, and he said, well, he's been in therapy, but, you know, they end up talking about whatever he wants to talk about. And most people would like to avoid this subject. So I keep my clients on track. I keep them going in the direction we're supposed to be going to get through this trauma. And I think that that's really what makes a difference. I think it's very unique what I do. Um, I use many different styles of therapy because one one size does not fit all. And it's the way I put it together that really makes it work. I use psychodrama, psychodynamic. I use right-hand, left-hand writing. Not all of that has been done before, but it's the way I put it together in my program. You know, what I do is I do a lot of inner child work, and I think it's, Not only do I think, but as the new um, science is coming out, 
It's important to get to that child part of us so that child part of us expresses its pain and expresses its needs and wants because otherwise we're just thinking with our, our logical brain and that really isn't doing much because it doesn't make the what we know line up with what we feel in our heart. So, Doctor, what are some ways that you treat the inner child? Well, one of the things I do when a person first comes to me is I, you know, I, I talk about their inner child and people are, are usually resistant to it, but, you know, I say this is, you have to look back at the kid that was really hurt. How old were you when you remember? How old does it feel? How old do you feel? And I said, when you leave here today, I want you to take this child with you. You're going to be the person that's going to take care of them. And most adults can take care of a child. And it may not be ready to be the parent they want to be, but they can take care of a child. And I say, this week, I want you to take care of this child and not do anything that you would do that you wouldn't do if you had a child, real child with you. So if you had road rage, just pretend, you know, and have that child sitting in the car next to you. You wouldn't drive like a maniac if you had road rage. You wouldn't go into unsafe places. You wouldn't get drunk. You'd eat and sleep at, at good, t- you know, proper times for this child. And that's what I want you to practice this week. And it really makes a difference. Are are these things that we're able to do on our own, or is a therapist always necessary? Well, I think it's good to have somebody work through the book with you. And if you have a therapist, let the therapist read the book and work through it with you. It's always better to have somebody to bounce these things off of. But if you can't, you can do it yourself. You may have a good friend. You may have a sponsor. Sponsors are really great for this. Um, people really depend on their sponsors. Their sponsors are there for them. Many of my 12-step people um, also have their sponsors that, you know, that really support them going through this. So I think that that can be had too. Doctor, when, when we hear the word abuse, we automatically think of things as physical abuse or sexually abused or assaulted. But as you said, there are different levels of abuse. So taking an example like a child who may have been bullied or, or mocked because maybe the, the child was overweight or different in some way. And now that adult suffers from low self-esteem. So how does your work with that inner child, how does it help that person move forward as an adult? Well, what I have them do in my right-hand, left-hand writing, you know, right-hand, left-hand connects the right side and the left side of the brain. Because, you know, the left side of the brain is the side of the brain that's very logical. One and one are two, and I'll do this and that, and it makes all the plans. And the right side is your creative side, your inner child side. And and in the back of your brain, there's the reptilian brain that carries a lot of the memories. You may not have uh, words for them, but it carries a lot of the memories. And it's important to get to that part to find out what's going on and how that child feels. Because... You know, what the, what the adult knows is not necessarily what the child knows. It's like asking somebody, what does the ocean look like? You know, the ocean, well, it's huge, it's vast, it's it's uh, cold, it's uh, warm, it depends. It, it's different color blues, it has waves. Yes, that is what the ocean looks like. But that's not really the ocean. If you go deep sea diving, you're going to find many, many, many different worlds down there. And that's the same with our unconscious. It, unless we go deep sea diving into that unconscious... We're only going to know what we know, and that's just the top of everything. It's not everything. So when I have people write with their right hand, left hand, asking questions with their not with their dominant hand and answering with their non-dominant hand, that is, you will eventually get the voice of that child and have that child be able to speak its pain and its needs, and that child tell you how it feels. And it's very powerful work. It really gets to the heart of the matter. Do you believe that victims should confront their abusers? Yes, I do. I believe that uh, every victim, well, as long as their abuser is not, uh, you're not feared for your life, Mm -hmm. I think it's important because otherwise you will always be looking at that abuser from the eyes of a child. And I get my people to a place to be able to care front because I'm not looking to make a problem. The problem has already been made by the abuser. But I'm looking to see if there's a pathway that could be done, made to maybe bridge the gap, to have that abuser hear the person for the first time and see what could be done and have the abuser take responsibility. I think it's the only way, even if the abuser doesn't take responsibility, my job is to get my person, my client, to finally really believe themselves, stop doubting themselves and stand up for themselves. And once they stand up for themselves like that, it's very powerful. 
The book is Carefrontation, Breaking Free from Childhood Trauma by Arlene Drake. If you would like to get information about Dr. Drake, you can visit her website, ArleneDrake.com. Dr. Drake, in our final moments, what is some advice that you offer to a person who has been abused? Well, I would say it's really important to get yourself into therapy. Really important to look into it. I know sometimes it's a frightening thing. But believe me, your life will open up and you will find a, a much better world for, for you. And you could finally become the person you deserve to be and we're meant to be. So get into therapy, start looking at, at, your, at your child part and see what really happened and take care of that child. Dr. Drake, thank you so much for being here with us today and for bringing awareness to this topic. You know, there are so many things, as you said, that happen to us as children that whether we remember them or not, they impact us throughout our entire life. So it's yeah. very important to understand what's going on with, within us and to get the help that's needed. So thank you for your work and thank you for being an advocate for victims and a voice for them. Thank you. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read our digital magazine, take part in the book club, check out our team, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.